good, guys? Welcome back to the Gold Diggers podcast. Listen, I haven't been here the entire season and I'm kind of nervous today because, boy, I haven't sat with these ladies in like ever. So I'm literally going off vibes, but make sure you are already following us at Gold Diggers UK on school on Instagram, at Gold Diggers UK on Twitter, at Gold Diggers UK on TikTok. And of course, lovely ladies, would you like to introduce yourself? Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Lauren. Uh, at Lauren Coys on Twitter. Welcome back, Anita. Team <laughs> uh, at Teams underscore GH. I didn't realise it was a welcome back committee. Know, welcome right. back. <laughs> Philippa at Philippa Akko. It's nice and cosy in here. I'm not repeating what these guys said. Anyways, <laughs> Joyce, Swifty Stones on Twitter. I can't believe we didn't say welcome back. I'm going to take that personally. <laughs> but I love you. <laughs> Anyways, since we last recorded, a lot has happened. Please, if I miss anything, make sure you let me know and let us know in the comments as well if you feel like we've missed anything. But... Lampard has been reappointed as Chelsea manager. Lampard has been reappointed as Chelsea manager. Antonio Conte has been sacked. Tottenham's interim manager that replaced Antonio Conte has been sacked. Chelsea lost to Real Madrid in the Champions League. Arsenal were drawing all over the gaff. They drew to West Ham. Philip was very gassed about that. Um, Newcastle absolutely destroyed Tottenham with a 6-1 Wait. win. You didn't even just mention the Arsenal corruption. The, the, they got destroyed by City. We just went straight to Spurs. <laughs> 6-1. Listen, I didn't make the rules, did I? I'm just reading what's on my list. <laughs> Haaland got the highest goal scorer ever in the Premier League, which, by the way, I think is kind of funny that everyone always talks about Alan Shearer, but not Andy Cole. When I saw the Andy Cole stat, I was looking at everybody sideways. Like, it just didn't make any sense. Andy Cole first. Alan Shearer matched it. Remember that. <laughs> West Ham <laughs> have begun their remontada. Liverpool have begun their remontada to top four. Chelsea got absolutely spoked by Arsenal. And Jude Bellingham is potentially going to Real Madrid. Is that Just, confirmed? It's not confirmed. It's not confirmed, but Fabrizio's saying it in it, so it might as well be confirmed. Wait, wait, I don't think Liverpool have the clout to try and even fight back. I don't think uh, it's about Liverpool Ella, having the clout. For this say, bit. I don't think it's about <laughs> Liverpool having the clout because, you know, respectively, respectfully, Ella, we've known that they're out of it for a while, but there are other teams sniffing, namely... I'm not even interested, I can't lie. So if the club wants <laughs> to get him, that's <laughs> fine, but... I've Someone, never been moved. I know you're not interested, <laughs> but I'm just saying that your people are also, you know, doing inquiries. If he's so. going to come to the Prem, it will be City and City alone. But if I hope not, he stays away Jude. from the Prem. You don't want to sing Hey Jude. I'm uh, really not that interested, you know. He's not that good. Like, he's got, he's got... Whoa. No, no, no. Okay, look, 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 before people cook me, I think he's obviously got the potential, but right now, with the form we're in, I don't think he sort of... I don't think he'd be a, necessarily a starter until like probably mid season ish. Yeah, but g- isn't Gundawan leaving? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, we're going to try and like, hold him back for like one year. Let's see, see how you like guys the development never is. But hold your players. If your player wants to leave, you guys. Exactly. Be, like, oh, okay, no. But like, door. Bernardo Silva has been wanting to leave for like four seasons. Yeah, but Papa is going to It's only because Barcelona don't have the funds. I was going to say, I think Pep is very much like if people can pay for you, then you can go. I'm going to hold you back. But if they ain't got the coin, you're staying. Don't care what your wife says about Manchester. So <laughs> I saw I I just seen on Twitter that um, Barcelona are about to pull a lever to get Gundogan. Look, so. how if much they, levers do they have left? Oh. They, look, they got levers upon levers. Oh, wow. I wish I could just access one. Listen, Barcelona has been investigated. They need to shut down. They can't out. keep finding more levers. Like the funds are empty. The funds are empty. <laughs> Abba is at like your club because the funds are empty. <laughs> money laundering in broad daylight. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no one's actually gonna catch them. Like that's the thing. Everyone's investigating them. There has been no arrests. When did somebody They've go to get arrested? They've been in their overdraft for years. They're Bro. buying players on the promise of what's it called stadium rights for mm, 20, yeah. 30 years of like it's mad. Bro, leave them. The thing is, okay, Jude Bellingham. Let's assume he goes to Real Madrid. He doesn't come to Man City. Mm. I think that that would be probably a perfect match. And obviously, I don't know if anybody here watches Real Madrid, but they are in need of someone like Jude Bellingham at the moment. No, I mean it, their exactly. midfield is like they've done. They're done for the future. They've yeah. got um, was it Camavinga? They have many. Too many. They'll have him. Well, yeah. And you know what? Watching Real Madrid over the years, you would watch them think, how are they ever going to replace? Um, Tony Kroos, Luka Modric, uh, and Casemiro, that midfield. And when you actually look at the options that they have now, and they're all so young, that's why they're Real Madrid. 
because no other club has that pool to have, like to have that selection of midfielders and then mm. you've got your you know your cast offs like your Danny Sabios of the world as well like the backup ones when you need to rest them <laughs> like <laughs> yeah do you know what I mean like they're, I they're, they're actually be, set wow well, I suppose it's going to be interesting to see who replaces Benzema which is probably going to be Mbappe we can talk about PSG and their nonsense hmm. I mean Messi hmm. ready to go hmm. Mbappe you know they were outside my man's house <laughs> yeah. Neymar's house <laughs> they were running they were running they Neymar's thought it was house, the, you know. they thought it was the French Revolution all over again because why were they screaming for him to leave hey, the French people when it was protest, Messi so. it was Messi Messi got himself in trouble so why are you outside Neymar's house can someone really explain <laughs> <that>? <laughs> and they were outside the PSG HQ telling them to put Messi back into the team <laughs> they said leave wow. by association <laughs> Like, wow. Both of you get out of the club. <laughs> but I, I look at the PSG situation and I think, how dare you tell Messi and Neymar to get out of your club? Does it even make any sense? People would die to have Messi in the club for five minutes and you're telling them to get out. And Neymar as well. Because I look at it and like you said, they went to his crib. How far can they take it until the police get involved and say, you can't do this with me? police will do what? He's on his own. 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 as standards. Mm. Yeah. People seem to think that just because, yeah, you've been injected with such and such, you deserve the world. You man are all fans. I understand that, you know, fans are what make football clubs go around, but also, Facts. none of, you're not exactly paying these kind of bills. So, Everybody must settle and chill. Mm. I can't lie though, there were a few Chelsea players that would be outside their house too. I was just about to say, like, if <laughs> I knew where, if I knew where, if I knew where Daniel Levy lived, lived, you know, Tim, you're an upstanding citizen, you ain't gonna be like outside. <laughs> Listen, oh, well. <laughs> I was even gonna say, speaking of entitled Chelsea, entitled fans, like Tima, I'm not entitled. Coming to Chelsea. I'm, I'm not, not saying you're entitled, but the entire fan base, they We're are not a entitled. little bit entitled. They're not, they're not. They are entitled. I have seen Chelsea fans no create it's, lists it's true. It's of true. people that need to leave that club. Lists. Yeah. And there's about 30, 7 to 13 people on that list. Tima. And do you know who should be top of that list? There's two people who should be top of that list. Yeah, maybe more than two. For me... Conor Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm thinking higher. I think oh, okay. I'm thinking Todd Bowley needs to be on that list. All right. <laughs> I think Frank Lampard needs to be on that list. I think that um, well, see Conor, Gall- Conor Gallagher is not the biggest the biggest issue. You've got the Kovacic's of the world who've been there. <laughs> be you know what? List. The funniest thing is you've been linked to City as well. Yeah, take him. My eyes are closed. <laughs> You can't, o- but it's open impossible your to sell like half a squad. You, it's impossible. That's well, never going to happen. Two for one. Here's, here's the thing, though. This is all <laughs> a byproduct of you know the sugar daddy years and like hear me out for this because Tima the girls love to make jokes about me and you being 50 years old yeah but look we know what Chelsea was like I'm saying wait he's gonna expose me like this like to make jokes I didn't say we're 50 clearly we're not but my point my point is that we remember what the likes of Chelsea was like before the Roman years right Mm. and then the Roman years came and he created sides to win you leagues fantastically but then towards the end you had a bloating problem where you've got all of this youth which is fantastic to have and all of these people who are like bought to plug in gaps but then when it doesn't work you just ship them off on loan or you do lots of bits and bobs the problem you lot have got is that it's a culmination of that you've got a really bloated squad you have a you know an owner who doesn't quite understand how this all works or he understands how it works but he wants to make things work and I think you guys are so used to popcorn results Do you know, that I a d- slow roast ain't really doing it for you but because of the way that you're, you've got too much going on you have mm. to have a slow roast now I disagree with that a little bit I think I can understand what you're saying I don't disagree with it mm. but I have standards and so what so what uh, a lot of people are trying to do or a lot of even Chelsea fans buying into this top only shit is the fact <laughs> that is not to have standards and me i refuse to lower my standards in football in life whatever my my standards are high so yeah you can make faces in eater no, you I'm can listening. do whatever and we're but the, 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 the thing is like Todd Bowley went in there and wanted revolution he should have gone into Chelsea and wanted evolution, which is slowly, slowly. How can you be sacking everyone from the commercial department down to the to the groundsman and then expect like like all within a space of six months? 
Do you know how insane that is? Do you really suck your groundsman? He sucked. He sucked. Oh, <laughs> 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 I don't know that what part. Was he sucked the groundsman and he also sucked the, the, like, the second in, is, in is command. No. Who had been there for 20 years. You realise that when you become a groundsman of a football club, you're in that job for life. For life. Literally and for life. Do you know how many people they've seen? Overseen, managers, everything. Before anything, Tima. Is this information verified no. before we put it <laughs> in? No, no, 100%, 100%, he sacked the groundsman. Oh. He sacked the groundsman and then, because they were basically a father and son team, he also sacked oh. the son. And they had been there for like 20 years. This is the, this is, this is the thing, this is what I'm talking about. Like, that's why I say that it's, it, it, is, it is bullshit. Like, how can you think that you, you come into a new, new sport and then you think, he, he said with his mouth, with his own crusty mouth, that... The it's Chelsea are underperforming. Crusty. <laughs> crusty. Every time he opens his mouth, more crosses are flying out. <laughs> no, I don't care, Lisa. I don't I care. I'm not, being, I'm not gonna listen. If you wanted me on the pod, you know I was not gonna be reasonable. <laughs> Do you know what? Go off. Go he off. He said Chelsea were failing on the commercial and sporting. They're, they're not performing. They're not performing well. So what he said. So what he really did was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna double it triple it and then I'm going to drag them into the relegation zone because it doesn't make sense you come in here you say that you like he, he wanted to buy a, a Premier League club for so long like this is not his first rodeo trying to buy in a Premier League club you come in you do the nonsense you also basically and then you want me just to sit there and say oh thanks Todd no Thank I'm, not say, I'm, not, I'm not saying that at mm. all I'm just saying that these things take time and I'm saying like when you have a change of ownership no you have to uh, I'm sorry no no no, no. I'm you not, have to have good no, no, no. people around I'm not around saying you, that man. he's done things right I think he's done things terribly and I can't lie it's fun to watch but <laughs> with that being said sorry it is but with that being said even if he was a man of sound mind it would have taken a little bit of time it wouldn't exactly. have dropped the way he yeah. you can't change so that right. you. but like just, just the best comparison thing, right Joyce, in fact, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say the best comparison to this, though, is the new ownership at Newcastle. That's that's literally <laughs> it. But that's getting a manager it. like Eddie Howe also helps. But the the difference is right. He's There's no pressure on Newcastle. Fucking manager. Yeah. It's not. It's the Newcastle are not Chelsea. And it's, it's not the same They're because just, the, Newcastle pressure. have like not been in Champions League places. For years, but they've bounced between Decades. the championship and the prem. Yeah, their There's different fan base standards. Isn't, their, 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 their fan base isn't demanding. Chelsea probably got the most demanding fan base in the disagree. in the league. Who do you think has got the most demanding fan base if it's not yours? Liverpool. I'm not saying it's not worrying kids, but who do you think has got if it's not yours? Please. <clears throat> Team must tread very carefully, right? <laughs> tread very carefully. Demand. Okay, wait. Demanding or entitled? Demanding. I, the, the word that Lauren used was demanding. Demanding. I think, in terms of demanding fans, I think that... Tima, please. <laughs> I think it's, it's Chelsea. It's not. I think I think there are a few... There are a few Name clubs. them. Name okay. the clubs. <laughs> I was about to. So, I think Liverpool fans are quite demanding. What? I think Arsenal fans are quite demanding. Uh, do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? Here's where I'll stop you, yeah? Liverpool fans are not demanding. They've waited thirty years to get that Premier League. And how many and how many managers have they sacked in that time? They haven't sacked many managers since Jurgen Klopp. They haven't sacked anyone since Jurgen Klopp came, right? They stuck with Jurgen Klopp through the dirt. When they were eighth and seventh and they battling were progressing. in the Europa League. And they were progressing. Don't get me wrong, they were progressing. But it took a while for them to see and understand what Jurgen Klopp was doing with this team because he stripped that team season but after he season. Could, but there was progress from when he came in. Yes, but okay. he stripped. And we haven't had any progress because it's been one season. We have had progress, but just not in the right direction. So negative progress. Yeah. <laughs> so that's not progress. That's not progress. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not pro- progress. Progression is progress. Progress. Not progress. No, but seriously, bringing it back, like you said Arsenal and Liverpool being demanding fans. In what way would you say Arsenal fans especially are demanding? Arsenal fans demand that their manager competes for the top four. It's not demanding. Like, you're talking about... So what I'm talking about is not demanding. We are demanding because we want trophies. Demanding their their, their level of demanding is not kind of like the same as as Chelsea, but they're still very demanding. They Chelsea, like Arsenal fans would have sacked Arteta three times over if it wasn't for the ownership. They they were calling for his heads. Everyone knows Chelsea, it. If there were sections of Chelsea fans calling for Tuchel's head in the same year he won the Champions League. I said I will drive the bus. In yes. the same, they were calling mm-hmm. for Tuchel's head. If that's not demanding, but and that's, that's not, not that's, the most that's demanding. That's not the majority of the fan base. I, I, let's, go, let's be honest. I'm, I'm not saying Sorry? it's the majority, but there were sections. There were sections of the fan it base. A, it was a vocal. If it's not the majority, yeah, it was a right. very vocal minority. You you won't. Yeah, you maybe won't you're right. Find, maybe you won't. I don't think you would find many other fan bases in the Premier League that would want to sack their. 
Champions League winning manager in the same calendar year, no matter how bad. Yeah, maybe you're right. Got. Maybe you're and right. And the thing is, Arsenal wouldn't do it. Liverpool wouldn't do it. I can tell you that for free. It's only yeah, our fans, right. Faye, that would want to do <laughs> something of that madness. Louder, Faye. louder, louder. No, honestly, <laughs> Faye, you have blood on your hands. <laughs> but even thinking about the manager and thinking about the um, the ownership and everything, right? Are you in a place where you think that things can progress and things can get better, especially because Chelsea are looking at Pochettino now? Things will only the, the thing. <laughs> Lauren's so sad. <laughs> Did you hear Lauren Wimper? <laughs> Sorry, it's really painful to hear. <laughs> to be honest, I've I've said it on Twitter and I'll say it again. It for me, it, it doesn't matter who the manager is. The more the, the the biggest the biggest question for me is the ownership. What is the ownership going to do? How involved are they going to be? If they're as involved as this season, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Pochettino, no Pochettino. Pep Guardiola could be in there and it'd still be a disaster. I do think he takes a step back. He has to. I do do think he he doesn't understand. As much as 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 it's been really fucking funny to watch, I think he's going to look and I think he's going to be like, look, next season, let's try a different approach. I don't think he has the balls to say, you know what? I got it wrong. Yeah, and that's what he's used to working with an overbearing chairman, to be honest, who doesn't know how to step back. But he's used to that. But no offence, but Tottenham are built like that. As you said, that Chelsea demanding not demanding whatever mm. we're not built to have that kind of infrastructure the, the fans don't have that mentality to to accept that and they've seen the thing is like you need something to hold on to 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 go along with and if you are not seeing any progress like across the field like what am i supposed to really hold on to to be like yeah okay i really trust these people because they've told they've showed me that they they can't be trusted in any in any decisions that they've made how can you go from potter to a man who almost relegated relegated Everton. Does that make sense to you? That was my question at the beginning, but I was told to shut my mouth because <laughs> Frank Lampard was the best thing that ever happened. Pro- proper Chelsea. Proper Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing that ever happened to my club. So, uh, so I I've gone on record and said Frank Lampard, it's a, it was the wrong decision. It's a lose lose situation. He either did well, which he hasn't, and he stays, which is an absolute this disaster. This is well and truly living long, long enough to see yourself as a villain. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <it's rude. laughs> how, does he, how does he go back to, how does he go back to Stamford Bridge? After the season, he doesn't. He will be welcome back with open arms. <laughs> with by same who, way by they rolled who? out with that banner. But, but it's <laughs> by the club itself, he'll be welcome back with open arms. It's just so shocking to me. Mm. He's shocking. Exactly what, what we were saying about how can people who have been sacked for being relegated or being close to relegation then be rewarded? They'd be failed up. For for me, it is. I'm I, I'm sorry, but I'm going to say it. It's entire. It's like privilege because you can't tell me anyone else gets that Chelsea job or is even stays in that Chelsea job after six successive losses back to back someone who doesn't he doesn't even take accountability he says that none of it he basically says none of it is his fault he said last time he was a Chelsea manager this is when I knew I couldn't take him seriously as someone to run a club he said that Chelsea weren't ready to compete six months later Tuchel won the Champions League with that same squad he said wasn't ready to compete how how are Chelsea fans welcoming him back? Whether you think the season is done or not, are we not a serious club, football club, or or not? Because he gets of... legend status on the pitch. And For some what, people, that's what yeah, gets him through the door. Yeah, but he's not a good manager. No, he's a terrible manager. Oh no, we all we, we all know he's a terrible manager. That. And this is the funny thing: it's like even if you go back to when he was at Derby, he had an inflated squad full, full of low knees from Premier League mm. clubs, right? So it was. He didn't do what he was meant to do at Derby in the first exactly. place. Flop then you lot came knocking for him, and it's a job where it's like you can't say no, but he could have said no. But it's like one of them once a lifetime things. I understand it. Went to Everton. I don't know why Everton hired him. When you're thinking when you've got the <laughs> likes of Ancelotti walking through your doors, and you come and you hire Frank Lampard. Okay, whatever. That's on you. But the way that he performed there. It's confusing. My man came to the to the press after your Real Madrid game and was like, "We didn't think they were going to be as good as they are." It's Real Madrid. <laughs> Apparently, no, no, that's a, that's a fake. That's a fake quote. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a fake quote. Do you know what? If that's a fake quote, I put my hands. But up he probably, but he probably thought it. Let's be honest. He probably is thinking it. All right. Ha- just sorry. to break the conversation up a little bit, Joyce, I want to bring you in here. In, I don't know who your legends are in it. Obviously, oh, Frank ouch. Lampard's one of your legends, anyway. But would you? <laughs> as Go uh, Stephen anyway, Island. Stephen Island and the man, right? Stephen let's Island. let's assume. Let's put you in. Okay, Chelsea, we're Chelsea. gonna say company for one because okay. we've already had like very good discussions about. Com- I wouldn't want to see him as manager. I love what he's doing now for Burnley, and I definitely think he needs to hold on to that Burnley job, give or two, what one two more seasons. Obviously, now that they're in the Prem, 
but I, I wouldn't want to see him ruin his legacy because uh, realistically, you can obviously separate the player from being a manager, but you don't do that to yourself. Like, yeah, I understand. Com- company you c- himself has sense. When Company was asked about the City job, he said City deserved the best manager in the world and I'm not that, so I wouldn't want the job. Even Company himself has sense. He knows it. But Lampard doesn't that's, have that's sense. someone with self awareness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lampard, I, think self-awareness. I think it's also. I think it does then, like, kind of dribble down into being an ego thing as well. To be quite yeah. honest, because yes. you can yeah. you can you imagine the kind of status you get if you you know you did your own thing as a player on the pitch and then you go and then achieve the height the highest of heights as a manager as well for the same club. You understand it, but you know Frank it, thinks he's Pep. That's it. Frank thinks he's Pep. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I cannot actually understand is when you think about the managers that Lampard actually played under, he's played under probably some of the like the greatest managers that we've ever seen. Mm. How can did you not learn anything? <laughs> like, like how could he's, he's he thinks awful. He, he just think like he he believes in his own hype. You can even see it like he doesn't think. As I said, he genuinely does not think anything is his fault, and all he cares about is cardio players, players that like to run around and look like they're working the busy hard. ones. Yeah, players. it's a great name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's like what they say about all the best players on the pitch. Unless they actually live, breathe and eat football and tactics and such, they're never actually going to be fantastic managers because they just assume that everybody has the abilities that they had. And but fin- that's on word on Thierry Henry, by the way, because Henry, do you remember when he started play, He started um, coaching his old team mm. and he was like, I just don't understand why the players can't do what I do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's simple. You should be able to do it. It's like managing doesn't work that way. And one thing that I've noticed is that some of the best players in world football have gone on to become managers and absolutely sucked. And it's because they're stuck in their own ways. And that's that's fair, you know, that's mm. fair. Not every manager, not every ex-player can become an amazing manager, but Pochettino. Let's narrow in and hone in on Pochettino. Am I gonna hear a whimper again? let's narrow in on Pochettino just real quick and these Chelsea players right obviously you've got your own list of the players that need to leave even though there's some of them I don't agree with but you've got your own list I've never made a list girl I know you want Conor Gallagher gone yeah see you later okay I know you want Mason Mount gone no you don't want Mason Mount gone no I think you should stay maybe I confused you with Faye but (laughs) (laughs) that's a charge I understand (laughs) that's a charge strike one (laughs) (laughs) But looking at the crop of players that you have now and the ones that you would like to get rid of potentially, do you think Pochettino can come into this group of players and take them on and take them to another level? Well, I want to say the next level, but the next level is really just, what, top 10? I don't, I don't know what the next level is for Chelsea, <laughs> but can they take them back to victory or top four or Champions League? What do you think? I think so much has to go right in the summer. Like, every single decision has to be A1 for for that to happen. A lot of the, a lot of the, you know, Chelsea have to sell players. We know about the financial fair play and the financial situation of the club. Obviously, the UEFA stuff doesn't really matter because we're not going to be playing Europe. But if you're looking at the Premier League financial fair play stuff, a lot of the, yeah, a lot of the. <laughs> you right there, Anissa? You can. Just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of um, uh, yeah, a lot of the players they just need to make the decisions about the players, and, and they need to go early. So then pre-season he has. His, his, his squad that he needs to, to work with. He, they need to sign a keeper, they need to sign a DM and they need to sign a striker. Mm-hmm. If that goes well and he has the pre-season, the whole of pre-season to work with the limited amount of players that he wants, potentially, but I don't see it going that way just as, just because of how much we have to sell. Mm-hmm. The, the, the amount of players, and they're not all going to go, let's be honest. Can I play with devil's advocate though? Go ahead. I actually genuinely don't think that you need, obviously you would like to all of that to go well, but in order to do better this next season, I don't actually think that you need all of that because, not to bring myself into it, but I think the reason why, there's a lot of things with why we're in the position we are this year, but a lot yes, of it is we. because games that- West, West, Ham. West Ham. West Ham, yeah. Games that we would have won or drawn last season, we just haven't. And it's because of other teams just having an uptick in form. When people revert to type, I think you'll be fine. We still need. We need three positions. No, no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, I don't think you need a magic window. I, think I you disagree. Need, I, with I think that. you need halfway, and I actually genuinely think it'll be enough. Okay, let's agree to disagree on that just for time. But Lauren, I'm going to bring uh, you in uh, here. 
And obviously, you have the most experience with Mauricio Pochettino. I mean, you've gone back and forth in a group chat. Yeah. So we... don't hold back. <laughs> I'm only <laughs> hosting today. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to argue. No, no, no. But do you think Pochettino, knowing what you know of Pochettino and how he's helped Tottenham to where they are now, do you think he is the right man to come into Chelsea and fix this blaring issue that they have? Like I, I, like I said in the chat, I don't want him to go to Chelsea because <laughs> it will physically pain me um, to see him running up and down at Stamford Bridge. But I think, Tima, the point that you made about the transfer window, he has worked under Daniel Levy for many, many years. Daniel Levy never got his business done until the last minute. He is familiar with mm. going through pre-seasons, not having the squad assembled in the way that he wants it assembled. So that I don't think that's going to cause him stress. In terms of what he's good at, he's good at taking players and raising their level. He's good at developing young players. He's good at trying to to find certain positions. Um, and also tactically, he's quite consistent. Yeah. Um, and it, and I think the, the football that he plays, it was exciting because it's just about working hard and pressing high and, and winning the ball. He will need a striker. Um, but if any manager that would come into Chelsea would, would need a striker. But okay. I actually think that the experience that you would have had at PSG and then going to a bigger club and having to manage players with big egos will help him mm. coming back to Chelsea. Like, I... He will, if at the bare minimum, he will make you enjoy and like watching the team because you will connect with the players and you connect with him and you can see that he's a genuine and honest person. Can I ask um, you a question? Yeah. Do you think Chelsea get top four next season? Though? Yes, because I think you have the players wow. to do it. I, gen, I, I, I still look at that Chelsea, even if you trim it down and then add a striker or I wouldn't even, it wouldn't even surprise Lukaku. me if he wants to work with Lukaku. I, I think I think Chelsea the get top four. The question is, does Lukaku want to work with Chelsea, though? Mm. Yeah, and, 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 and yeah, yeah. That's a fair point. So, but, exactly. And so what would you say to potentially a Harry Kane exit to Chelsea to really Harry Kane is going... With, hey. with I'm not saying it's going to happen. I, I, I feel like the whole Harry Kane about argument it. about where is he going this summer, Daniel Levy is one of the most impossible people <laughs> to negotiate with in football. It is not Harry Kane's choice. His contract does not expire this summer. Daniel Levy will keep him. He will never sell him to Chelsea. I would, I'll, I would doubt he will even sell him to Manchester United. He will keep him. The only thing that is the saving like grace of the of the Tottenham Hotspur <laughs> Football Club at the moment is Harry Kane. If if Harry Kane goes this summer, I'm telling you, Daniel Levy, if they find your address, you should Spurs move house. <laughs> he cannot. He cannot. He cannot sell Kane. That's the only thing that we are clinging on to. He cannot Ooh, do it. Word. You know he cannot do it. You know, you know whether, whether he does one more year and then leaves on a three, fine. But Daniel Levy likes his assets and Harry Kane is his prized assets. He will try everything emotional. We'll build you a statue. Oh, la, 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 la. Go break all these records. He will try very, very hard so to he... get him to sign that contract. He should come for Poch then. Pardon? He should come for Poch. What, that's one of the reasons why I don't want Poch to go to Chelsea because I now think Chelsea become a viable option, just not this summer because it's Levy who will have to sell him. He's not going to sell... Harry Kane to Pochettino at Chelsea. We have to be for real. No, we have to be for real. I still feel like he goes to United. Sorry. Oh, wait, hold I, on. I don't think he goes this summer. You think United are going to pay a hundred million? Apparently, Harry Kane. things have happened, babe. Apparently, they Anthony. only have a hundred million. Man, Man United this summer. <laughs> Philip is still like strange things have happened. Strange, uh, we've seen you, who knows? nonsense. If if you who think knows? about, for example, there were rumours that that Bayern Munich may pay eight between eighty and hundred million for Colo Mouani. I mean, all of these players, if if Jude Bellingham's going for north of a hundred, all of these players are driving up Harry Kane's price. Yeah, but the problem is who's, he's who's got a year left. Him? He's got a year left. Do you think Daniel Levy cares? He should do because if he's the shrewd businessman that everybody likes to call him. He wants something for, like you said, his prize asset. He's not letting his prize asset go the, for free. He will do the same that he did with Christian Eriksen. Christian Eriksen wanted to go and he refused to sell him and then we waited until January. <laughs> He's not going in the summer. <laughs> Musa Dembele wanted to go, didn't go. We sold him in, to China in January. He will, I, Harry Kane, I do not think he will go anywhere. Does Daniel Levy like your club? Like, what <laughs> no, is this? When he calls himself a Spurs fan, he makes me sick. <laughs> he makes me sick. <laughs> if there's the there's soul, not many man. people on this, on this earth that make me sick but Daniel Levy is one of them. Daniel Levy and Donna Cullen, who's also on the Spurs board, they make me Lewis. sick. Hey, hey, Joe hey. Lewis with his yacht, but, you make me sick. <laughs> hey. Yeah, on your yacht, you make me sick. Donna's kind of cool. 
leave Donna out of this. Did you see? Did you did 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 you see the clip of Connor when she got when she got when she got caught on on the on the camera a couple of weeks ago? They look kind of cool to me. What happened? What did she get caught on camera? She got caught on camera. I can't remember which goal it was that we had conceded, and she turned around and then she went. This is effing shit. Oh yeah, and she I got caught. This. She got caught in in the clip. Ooh. That's somebody that cares Mr. about Levy. the club. Then that's somebody she, that cares. So she is the she's blocking Marisha Pochettino coming back to Spurs. Why she doesn't want him back? Why she doesn't want him back? Again, again, again. Are we sure allegedly. these are facts? Allegedly, is this allegedly, <laughs> or not? allegedly. You need to Alleg- allegedly. Okay. allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. What, <laughs> what the reporters what the reporters are saying? <laughs> Why does she specifically <laughs> not want him back? I don't know whether the her team, and Mar- Mauricio Aruba? got Mauricio got on, but she's she's Daniel it's Levy's right hand person. Oh. She's she's second in command. Mm. And suspicious behaviour. The the reporters are saying allegedly. The, <laughs> allegedly. Support, the reporters are saying that it's her specifically that doesn't want Poch back. Okay, so Pochett, let's say Pochettino's a comeback. There's also the other option of Julian Nagelsmann, apparently, allegedly. As Joyce likes to say, allegedly. Would you be happy with a junior Nagelsmann taking over your club? I will only be happy with Nagelsmann if I see Poch at Chelsea. But no other op- no other option. I don't don't bring me well company just signed a new contract. I don't want Xabi Alonso. I don't want Potter. I don't want anybody. If I have to stomach Poch at Chelsea, it's because I have Nagelsmann. Any other option, sorry, I can't believe I cannot believe Daniel even let this happen. Pardon? He's doing very well. Alonso. I don't care what he's doing. What I, I I don't care. So what I makes you care. want Nagelsmann? So the same the same Nagelsmann that had only lost three games at Bayern Munich, and and was deemed terrible. Tuchel has already lost that amount of games in 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 six or seven matches. Hey, listen. Just saying. Just listen. saying. Listen. Don't talk about that. Like Nag- Nagelsmann was sacked for doing a good job at Bayern Munich. When you look at what he was doing at Leipzig and that hybrid system, being able to switch between the back four, the the, the back three, the back four. In terms of actually fitting in with the values of Spurs mm-hmm. and the way we want to play football, because apparently <laughs> we have a culture <laughs> and we have a I'll way say that we which play values. <laughs> Dare is to do or whatever it is. Is that, is that your values? <laughs> Apparently, we have a style of football that obviously Mourinho, Conte, negative football doesn't work for us. Neither does winning trophies. But okay, let me, let me go just saying and say it. Let me say it. Let me Someone's say it. Say it. <laughs> yeah, own it. Let me say it. I think Nagelsmann will fit the way that we need to play we need to be tactically flexible yeah. and he can do that he can bring that he's a young manager so i'm so like i can i'm like i said if poch wasn't going to chelsea then i think maybe i would lower my standard of uh, what what is acceptable to see poch at chelsea and who comes in at spurs if it's not nagelsman i'm i'm sorry again daniel levy you make me sick do you think that um nagelsman can look at someone like uh eric dyer and and um, Emerson Royale and think, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something here. You know what? Yeah, Emerson Royale played yesterday and actually transformed the back line because Eric Dyer was on the bench. And if if the hierarchy think that they, it, it's acceptable to give Eric Dyer more years, I've never seen such a useless defender. The same reason why he was behind Tyrone Mings and Connor Cody uh, uh, for England. He was behind them for a reason. He's a centre-half defensive midfielder masquerading yep. as a centre-back. Exactly. He that. cannot defend. If you, if you are playing in a back three and you're the middle centre-half, you have to be the aggressive one. You have to push up. You have to step out of the line. Eric Dyer Mr. Back off, back off, back off. Do you know how many shots? You see, Hugo can't save anything. How many shots that we take from the edge of the box because Eric Dyer, back off, back off, back off. He's a useless defender. He switches off in key moments and he cannot try. How can you be a centre half and you can't track the flight of the ball? Is anyone going to stop her? No, no, man, no, 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 no
Like, make your comments. The thing is, I cannot be rattled. When I think about our season and when I think about the state of Spurs, we don't have a permanent manager men's manager we don't have a permanent women's manager we hired a director of football that was doing funny business hey. at Juventus and then we have had to go through all of this mess just for him to lose his job because the ban came through you know what I spent today doing I spent this morning watching the under 21s get relegated hey. then afterwards I watched our <laughs> women's team that also has my manager get slapped this in every been. single department of Spurs today this is season, to do it. <laughs> We oh, have no, been no, awful. Is to do. <laughs> Every single department we have been awful. Daniel Levy and that board have so much to answer for. We have rescinded. We have gone backwards. We have nothing to cheer for, which is why I said they can't sell Harry, Harry Kane because it's the final straw, the final nail in the coffin. Can I, can I ask Bree? Can you just put a little backing track to what she just said so we can just what, have a like little the, theme tune? What, like, the world's what, falling. What, no, right? like, <laughs> I think it's Stormzy big for your boots. I was going to say. That would have slapped her the back of you. What's that rhythm? This this club has driven me to the depths of despair. Like, what are we doing? We don't have a strategy. There's, like, we we don't have anything. How can you go to, I haven't even even discussed the football results. How can you go to to, to Newcastle? How can you be losing a football match 5 nil after 20 minutes? And then one week later, you're losing three nil after fifteen. Wow. Do you not have shame? Uh, who is taking accountability? You know who's in the in the senior leadership team? Eric Dyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. That sums up Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. We have issues everywhere. Can the I academy you? is failing. The women's team is failing. The men's team no. is failing. No. Can I just ask you one question? No, you've asked like three. Okay, one, one, no, one okay, just one question. Just one question. <laughs> Who do you think is in the worst state, Chelsea or Tottenham? Spurs. You think so? Spurs, because Chelsea will come back. I mean, yeah, it's a momentary thing. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea moment, will come back. You guys can't come back from what you're doing. Uh, Chelsea yeah, will come yeah, back. Who's in the worst state right now? Right now, right you guys now. are playing footies under the table. <laughs> if, we finish, <laughs> if, we, if we finish, if we finish, we're off. If we finish, <laughs> eight, neither of us are in European competition. So what's worse? I think but I think Chelsea are much worse. I think Chelsea are in a much more. Listen, Lauren, you've had one win in five, right? Chelsea have had one win in eight. I've not been alive to see that happen. One win in eight. That is embarrassing. But you will come back. But right now, it's not guaranteed. Though. There's nowhere to come back the, to. I guess, I guess the question for both of the clubs, right, is: Do you both of you have the infrastructure to fix your glaring issues? And, and the argument for the Chelsea fans, not saying that I particularly agree with it or disagree with it, but the argument is that Todd has tinkered too much in the back that the infrastructure is broken and so it's going to take a lot of things to make that it better part. so i hear hear that what part. you're saying lauren and in the kindest way possible because i will get in trouble for saying this you lot have got a intrinsic issue that you paper over cracks getting into champions league year after year has papered yeah. over your cracks and until you have a you don't have you haven't hit a rock bottom do you see what i mean really you no, I mean, so, on the, wait, 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 stop, no, 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 F you, for you, now, let me finish. You think five, <laughs> nil, you think five nil after, tw- that wasn't rock bottom. Let, let it, it, up my, bad results are bad results. Man United lost seven nil. Like, bad results are bad results. I hear Rewind it. It's it. painful. I get so it. But the fact of the matter is, is that you are still able to paper over cracks by like, I think if next season you end up in Europa Conference spots, or less again then they need to sit and take account and be like what needs changing but right now when you guys it's a it's a bit like the arsenal effect in it like it was not going great for a while because they didn't really have much money but arsenal Wenger was like i need the champions league money as long as i get the champions league money things don't have to change but what did arteta do when he came in arteta's won an fa cup the the thing that i have with 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 spurs is that what are we bouncing back to? Under the ownership, we've won one trophy in 20 years. Because football is about winning. It's wait, not what, about wait, wait, being what trophy in the is, that? is that the... Pardon? What trophy is that? The, 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 the League Cup, Cup. 2008. Oh, 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 2 1 against Chelsea. I haven't forgotten. It's the only one I have to remember. Whatever. The exhaust pipe. The preseason. What did you say? The exhaust pipe. Cup, Whatever it is. The exhaust pipe. I'm not having it from you, 2020. What's called 2002, baby? Like, no. we're not doing this, okay? <laughs> but, that, but this is my point. Like, Chelsea know what it takes as, as a fan base 
to achieve success. You have success to fall back on and you will go back to that level of achieving success. What even Arsenal have a history of success. What does what what does Daniel Levy and what has he achieved in terms of actual success? Because we're talking about oh maybe we'll finish fourth. Oh maybe we'll ha- have a good run in, in in Europe. What does that mean? Even even West Ham are, are closer to achieving a, a European uh, final or a trophy. I, I would say trophy because we did get to the Champions League final more likely to do it than we are. So when this is what I mean by what is the point and what is the strategy because we're not doing anything. And I agree with you, I'm saying, but I'm, my point is that you, you because ha- you can paper over cracks, no one will see it as intrinsically like anything wrong until you hit a bottom. Yes, the results on the pitch are not great and you men have looked weird, but you haven't hit a point where it's like actual embarrassment yet. When you hit that, because the Chelsea fans are feeling it right now. And again, we're all saying they'll bounce back, but they actually have to change something like in the entire infrastructure right now because Todd Bowley has gutted the gaff. On, on top of all of this, right, we look at what Antonio Conte said, which Philippa has basically just explained. That yeah, oh, Conte no, was right. Yeah, no matter what happens, they can change the manager as many, as many times as you want. There's something wrong intrinsically. I like that word, intrinsically within that club exactly and that, and that's that where, to me is rock bottom because if we never if it never gets uh, changed you know what? what's the what? point you know what's what? the point every you know season I find same rubbish. very funny yeah just fucking hilarious yeah it was just just a couple months ago everyone was like our oh, Chelsea fans are being over dramatic blah, blah 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 you guys will be fine you're being over dramatic this but what, what is what what, what, what what is fine for Spurs not winning anything. Yeah, because that's what you guys have been doing for the last time. Exactly. Years. But ask a Spurs fan who's happy with that. But it's not rock bottom. Rock bottom is lingering relegation. Well, celebrating 40 points. <laughs> celebrating 40. Until you've celebrated 40 points, I don't want to hear it. All of us here have celebrated. Until you not, sniffed, maybe not you, but. Maybe, until you sniffed sniffed relegation. Back then. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> no, no, Joyce wasn't, I was an, Joyce I was wasn't a, about back then. then. No, let me, and I know we're here to talk about, I know we're here to talk about men's football, but I look at my club holistically. Right. You're telling me we're talking about relegation. Our women's team have two games left to save our season before we get relegated. We're a big Premier League club. We're a big six Premier League club. And our women's team could get relegated and we also have no manager in that team. Uh, so when I'm talking, when I talk about Spurs, I talk about it holistically, as in there are prop. Our, our academy got relegated today. There are problems in every single department, which is it's a cultural problem. So th- when I talk about rock bottom, we are at rock bottom because our, every department is is flopping. It's I flopping. Feel like then you can, it's kind of like Man United as well, don't know. They had problems with their women's team. Their women's team weren't getting, they had to go across the road to flip in, use mm. the bathroom. That there is rock bottom for that Man United women's side of the team as and well. And they turned it around. And they turned it yeah. around. Tottenham can still turn it around, right? What, Daniel Levy, who keeps calling women's football a lost leader, for example? Don't get me wrong. Daniel Levy, he's wrong for all of this. All of <laughs> Everything he said about women's football in the last couple of months have just been absolutely wrong, right? But on top of that, looking at the men's and the women's, you can still both turn it around, one. Two, you look at Chelsea, the men's, right? And you look at them lingering in 12th, Again, celebrating 40 points. I've never done that in my life. <laughs> celebrating 40 points. And you look at the Chelsea women's just lost in the Champions League semi-final. We don't know how we're going to come back for that. We look at the FA Cup final that we're going into. We don't even think we're going to win that. Then we have to battle for this WSL title, which are probably maybe or maybe not going to get. Chelsea fans, they, we can't turn anywhere right now. We are at rock bottom. The women's team is not a rock bottom. It's not a rock bottom. Oh, for but God, the thing yeah, is, nah, but, but, but Chelsea, 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 my point is Chelsea, Chelsea will, Chelsea will bounce back. And that, that's, 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 that, that's, that's my not, point. It's not guaranteed. That's but, my point. But, With all those death row contracts, what do you mean it's not guaranteed? <laughs> it's not guaranteed. We may Top have six maybe, row. but like you guys will In be the better than whatever maybe. this is. <laughs> Look, I we, can't take any of that seriously. You don't know what flirting with the championship looks like. We don't have. Do that. Don't, we have. Don't we, we've my intelligence, we I'm it. so sorry. We've almost kissed the championship this season. Like, we basically were lipsing them. What, from 11 for 12? Yeah, we I were lipsing them at, from afar. I was looking at <laughs> we how far... Them. I'm not, I'm just not thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you see what I mean? But I, th- this is what I'm trying to say, Lauren. I do, I do completely see your point. But it's, again, one of them <laughs> things where you look at levels in it. You've got to set pace. No, Unfortunately... Man. Chelsea have been setting pace at a certain place and you guys haven't. So it's not great and it needs to be better for you, but you don't necessarily know what the better is that you've make a, made mm. a fall. If that makes sense. I'm just trying to make... Do you know what? I'm hearing it from Philippa because your club has hit rock bottom before. 
Hell yeah, <laughs> twice. <laughs> the only person I probably cannot hear it from here is Joyce because you don't know what being a suffering looks like. She no, wasn't alive. Yeah, you're not old enough. You're not yeah. old enough. Once these charges fan. drop, I might do. Listen. <laughs> 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 uh, point deduction <laughs> point deduction maybe for next season Them but this season they're going to be nice listen, <laughs> the thing is you're still season, winning these though fam <laughs> this season we need you guys to not get your points deducted okay and just moving it on from the Chelsea Tottenham debate even though these two they both won this weekend by the way yeah. Chelsea men uh, and unmoved. Tottenham men I'm unmoved both won <laughs> Okay, we're not moved. That's fine. We're moving on anyway. <laughs> but Arsenal, since we last recorded, Arsenal have just <laughs> fallen, <laughs> fallen so Delicious. badly <laughs> from grace. Delicious. Can you see these wicked people? Hey, the hey. season may be bad, but if Arsenal don't win the league, it's okay. Can I just I can say, relax. Laura was in agony two seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> It's the hey, football rivalries, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but Joyce, looking at the way Arsenal have kind of crumbled and kind of taken a tumble down, are you finally going to say Manchester City are going to win this league? Do you think that you deserve it ahead of Arsenal? Um, do we deserve it? Before the World Cup, I obviously <laughs> would have said, you know what, this is This is going to be a really long season. I already gave my prediction for how this the season was going to end, you know, City first. I'm still sticking by that. But I'm still also not going to like outright still say that we're winning it until it's done. Um, yeah, no, it's looking long. And to be quite honest, I, I don't necessarily rely on whoever Arsenal are playing to help us out and whatever. But I was expecting a lot more at uh, St. James's uh, today, unfortunately. But um, <laughs> Same. Like, like I talk to all City fans and just tell them, like, turn your TV off. Enjoy the sunshine outside. Don't bother watching Arsenal games. At the end of the day, it's all in our hands. We have to play every mm, single game yes. and win it. And currently, I think it was after the Crystal Palace game, I sat in the other studio saying, if this is the game where we start our 10-win run, I wouldn't believe it. And here we are, 10, win, 10 wins after that. I believe. It, it, I, I, believe. I, I believe. Lauren didn't just believe. Lauren was doing prayers every <laughs> night. <laughs> it's true. She did a 10-day fast. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, so since we last recorded, right, Arsenal have drawn 2-2 two, two with West Ham, 2-2 two, two with Liverpool, 3-3 three, three with Southampton and lost 4-1 hmm. to Manchester City. Now, Tottenham, as the main rival fan, which one of those matches was the sweetest for you? Because I can tell you which one was the sweetest for me, but which one was the sweetest for you? It, ha- it has to be the the, the City Arsenal because <laughs> the, the way that Arsenal fans have been gassing up the team, that Pep showed them levels. <laughs> that and that, the holding cons- yeah, consolidation like, goal made me giggle. Just like, a little. <laughs> it, it, they, there was just such a golf in class, in everything, in tactics. Like, Mikel Arteta has never beaten Pep Guardiola. He schools him every time. So that one was nice. Because I think the Arsenal fans kind of knew what was coming, but deep down they weren't telling us because they were still ho- hoping, clinging on to something. Oh, they knew. They that, knew. Yeah, that, that one felt nice. Out, out of all of them, that was, that was the sweetest. I mean, because the reality is, if they had won it, you could have easily said, you know, Arsenal winning the whole Period. thing now. Mm. Exactly. And Timo, which one <laughs> out of the Obviously, list? Obviously, lo- I, loved, I loved the fact that... Um, Erling Haaland was disrespectful for not even putting his hair in a ponytail <laughs> when he scored against Arsenal. But I think for me, it was it was very sweet. I loved every single second of that, even when they, they scored and I thought they could do a little something. But I think the Liverpool game was when I was looking like, okay <laughs> then, you guys are not as good as you thought you was gonna. You are. Was it really the Liverpool game for you? Because for me personally, as a West Ham fan, sat in a bar in East London, surrounded by bare Arsenal fans, I don't know why you lot were encroaching in my space, <laughs> being 2 nil down. The fact that they let us get back into that game and we actually could have won that game was nonsense for Was me. that before I the was, Liverpool game? I was actually going to ask you, Philippa, if that was the highlight for you because as a West Ham fan, you're lingering in relegation, me then personally, Arsenal give your way in. Me personally, Arsenal winning the league doesn't bother me as much as everybody else of course. for obvious reasons but also because what's a little difference why not but no. okay no, sorry no, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. Hey. again flirting hey. with relegation and our, what's called, our, our local rivals are currently in the playoff what's called playoff positions in the championship what's going on at the top doesn't really concern me all right but with that being said yeah it was the, it was that and i looked at it and i was just like arsenal got a problem because i love my team but you can't if you're going if you're going to be league leaders, you cannot let us get back into the te- the um, the game like that. That Southampton game, 
if Southampton could have finished their dinner, that would have been very painful. Oh, Regardless yeah. of it, outside of like City's win, that game was the one that brought me the most joy because that that in itself told me levels about where Arsenal are at right now. When we're quite literally the shark is right behind you mm. on your ass, yeah, but we saw and you're, you're here season. just kind of no, screaming. You know what? We saw that. I mean, that mentality there is weak when the pressure is on. Do you know the Southampton game? I was out with two of my guy friends who supported Arsenal. I hadn't seen them for ages, so they're giving me hugs because of where Chelsea were. Mm. And then we looked at the Arsenal, because it was like Friday night. Yeah. 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 I thought, okay, f- easy 3-0 win. And then when I saw that they were losing 2-0, Two. Yeah. I was just like, it's, it's done. I put the game on instantly. After 1-0, I put it on. I was like, wait, what? And then I saw Fia Walcott scored as well. I said, yeah? <laughs> cool. <laughs> and you could tell, and uh, that, that bit was sweet because you could tell he didn't oh, want to score. He didn't want to score. Just, yeah. just the week before, he was like, maybe we'll help Arsenal out and beat Man City. They got slapped. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> That's, <why I, laughs> <they got> slap. <laughs> That's why I know Joe Woolick was deliberately missing today because he, he, he wanted to do something for Arsenal. But yeah, no, nah, that, that Fia Walcott it's was sweet. It's not completely over though. Brighton, you got Brighton. Oh yeah, Brighton away is our game in hand. So mm. that's that's where I'm bricking. Awesome. So what, <laughs> what's your um, record like against Brighton? It's not that bad. Uh, away, I think we beat them five nil last season. So um, yeah, but that's on the Potter, so it doesn't count. I need, oh, I need, I need, yeah, so deserve me a different ball game <laughs> yeah. than now. I need, I need deserve me to yeah, bench yeah. Kaiseido. I'll give credit where credit's due, so yeah, that's why I'm, I'm bricking it. But like out of that Europa League spot, mm, man. out of the three away, away uh, games that we have. Yeah, that's that's the one. Yeah, but th- Brighton are gonna get it. Like we're sixth, um, and I think two points ahead of Brighton, and they have three games in hand <laughs> oh, yeah. over us. <laughs> you honestly, Deserby can throw the Man City game away, and they can three, still yeah. do it. Three games. <laughs> three as games. As long as they FA beat Cup. Arsenal, man, they can do whatever they like. Just Literally. beat Arsenal. <laughs> so Arsenal have Brighton, Forest, and Wolves left for the rest of the season. Man City have Everton, Chelsea, Brighton, and Brentford left. Now looking at Arsenal's <laughs> fixtures, Brighton, Forest, and Wolves. How many points can we see them getting realistically? Because I didn't expect them to get the three points against Newcastle um, earlier on today. So seven, seven. Yeah. seven. They'll draw. Seven. I think seven. they'll draw one right. game. Mm. Which one do you think they're gonna draw? It's, it's probably gonna choice. be Brighton's game. Brighton I feel like game. they'll probably draw in that game. Yeah. And Philip, are you of the same opinion? Yeah, but don't be surprised if they beat Brighton. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised uh, either. If Brighton are clinical. I, j- I think they would. T- I, w- I think they will take away at least a point because not being funny, defensively Arsenal was still very poor today. Mm. Newcastle just didn't score. Like if if you look at Brighton and how quick they are and how they use wide players, if Zinchenko is on that pitch, he will be exposed. So I, I, I so- still think Brighton Brian will take points off Arsenal. I, find, I hope, anyways. I find it so crazy that Newcastle couldn't score today but managed to score six against Tottenham just the other week but just putting that out there sorry well, she's <laughs> already dead I she was laughing a little bit too nah, much nah, just so a second I'm sorry. ago what you, what? Eric Dyer in the defence let me not bring <laughs> up Eric <laughs> again let me not bring up Eric again Hugo I, I, I think I could take Eric Dyer yeah I could score against him so it's okay <laughs> that's okay it's really it is question. what it is sorry but I have to ask so it looks like Hugo's not going to play again this season do, yeah. you think he, do you think he's played this last game for you I hope so. I think so. And speaking of which, I, I did want to ask this question. So obviously they're saying injury or some sh- or some shit, right? Um, it's what do you think? A bit sus. It's what's happening? Because he was it not the Newcastle game half time. Mm. Yeah. We didn't see him from that moment, yeah. and I'm thinking something went down in that because of what I've seen in All or Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Something yeah, when he had went go down yeah. in that dressing room. I, I think so. But then it's it, the only thing that makes me think maybe he is injured is because they let him come out and do the post match interviews after the game. But something happened in that dressing room. I would, I would have been. I'm the, if I'm the captain, I'd be telling these people about themselves. So I don't blame Hugo if he lost his head uh, and had a go at people. What about himself, he's also not been good. <laughs> no, but that's why I think I think that's it is. I think he and this is the problem. He come he 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 came back into the team after the long injury and judge up the back because at least Fraser Forster was good with his feet. Hugo plays like he's drunk. Um, I think it's time for him. It's time for us to replace him. I think it was time for us to replace him last season. But I think I'm not going to sit here, um, even though I just said he plays like he's drunk, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and abuse him. Against him that's such um, a thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> well, he should have been dropped from the captaincy, in my opinion. But um, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and criticise him because at, at some point, 
he was a world class and an outstanding goalkeeper and he was yeah. a good leader and he was playing at a, at a level where it wouldn't I wouldn't have begrudged him if he wanted to move on from Spurs but he stayed mm. and he committed and unfortunately he has nothing to show for it <laughs> but because of the service that he's given Spurs over the years I want us to do it respectfully but he cannot yeah. be the number one because he is also part of the problem. In, in if for example we get in an Argusman, you cannot have a goalkeeper that cannot play out from the back. It's not possible. I've, it's I've not. I've got a keeper for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You take your ball. So off, off yeah, I think hands, it's time. Please. But I would like to. See, I mean, he's still got one more year left. So I wouldn't sell him this summer. I would have him there to mentor whoever. If the next goalkeeper that comes in is young. I, and he, I would have him in the dressing room if he's happy to sit on the bench. But as your cup keeper, maybe that is a World Cup. If we were playing, keeper, if we no were playing way. in the league, league two, and one. But like as the, like we, it depends who we oh, have. If we it. have a possession based team, God, we cannot have a goalkeeper damn. that cannot play out from the back. Speak, okay. He brings panic into the team. I have a feeling you're gonna spit another F64. So we're, we're <laughs> gonna we're gonna park that right there. Get back to Manchester City. Obviously, just the other week. No, other week was it not this week? Mm-hmm. When did you play? And then Haaland did the um. Uh, yeah, it was it was midweek. midweek. It was yeah. midweek. Yeah. Was it against West Ham? Uh-huh. I said this first, goal. first goal he against, against West Ham. Um, I don't know West if I said Ham. it on the pod. I don't think I said it on the pod, but I said West Ham are gonna go down in history. This guy <laughs> is going to <laughs> break the record <laughs> with us. I said it. I said it. I knew. I just fucking knew it. So upset. So I'm upset. crying. My, uh, Proper sincere full condolences. Circle. But at least you held Arsenal to a draw, so we. You know, at least you'll be in all the right clips. There. Honestly, no, I don't like that. Oh, okay. You know, like when it comes words. on TV and they'll yeah, yeah, they're going to keep always, the clips. Always West Ham. It's always at the London Stadium as well. It's lit, man. I can always see where I'm sat. Yeah, maybe you should pay rent. It's, <laughs> it's lit. Go. It's lit. <laughs> but speaking of Haaland, right? Did you expect Haaland? Well, from the start of the season, I'm not talking about during the season. You at know what? Every season, single, did you expect every it? single game that that man scores, I sit, I sit there thinking about the first time I was on the podcast. And you guys asked me for my guess, and I said something like twenty-four. Mm-hmm. Bro, what the what the hell was I smoking? <laughs> 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 that guy is unreal. Literally, no, like blessing from above. Really, I can't lie. No, like every other game, he sort of just like kind of surpasses it, like expectations. everyone's expectations at this point. And obviously, you've seen how his game has developed throughout the season as well. Because obviously, mm. we were talking about how bad his link-up play was at the start of the season, and you know how the the team basic has to adjust for Haaland and now he's doing a lot more playmaking this guy's upgraded all his other software it's, it's working for him yeah. it really is so like I genuinely cannot wait to see him next season and what more we have to bring but you know what let's finish this season first I don't know if he's gonna uh, beat uh, Dixie Dean's record but uh, I'm also I'm also not interested <laughs> like, he's already like booked 63 goals yeah. for a for, yeah, that was when yeah. like those guys were playing with trench foot and whatever like he's, right, he's, and he's solid not far foot. off you know he could, <laughs> solid he's, concrete he's balls in the 1923 seasons there where yeah. concrete yeah. balls <laughs> 1923 seasons season trench foot <laughs> <laughs> Like, to be honest, yeah, like, Carlin's is... I really When you just said he was going to scru- um, struggle? I thought he was going to. I have Boo, no... man. <laughs> Several what people did, thinking? but then... Because I, I, I just... I, I didn't know whether he would fit into the way that City play. I, felt I like, will never forget the season. Not even, like, a season, a period of time, yeah, during this season, when people were saying... Harland is holding my city back. Yeah, they played better yeah. without yeah. him. I couldn't believe it. I hope all of you people that were saying it, because there were a lot of you in the Gold Diggers comments that were saying it as well. Harland holding my city back. I hope you guys have all swallowed your tongue. Who? Anyway, who? sorry, who Joyce, it? carry on. Dixie, but, who? who said uh, yeah, Dixie Dean. He played Dixie for Dean. whatever Everton, didn't it? but yeah. So I think Harland is. 13 more goals off from matching it and 14 mm-hmm. to beat it. Um, yeah, I'm, He could be I'm 10 not... off if he'd scored. <laughs> yeah, but you know, <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> it, it <laughs> says so much about his, his personality as well. And I think he's done a lot more as well in the dressing room. You can definitely see it like feel like a proper togetherness with mm. the city when they play on the pitch now, especially with <laughs> the, current, the, cu- you win. <laughs> the <laughs> current run we're having as well. You've got to hold it together, isn't it? Do Cup. you think... Well, I'll throw this out to everyone here, but do you guys think that Harlan has... Um, beating the allegations that he can't assist, he can't create, etc. Because you look at the Arsenal match where he kind of created for Kevin De Bruyne instead mm. of De Bruyne creating for Erling Haaland. Has he beaten the allegations for you guys? Um, Maybe I in two more games because that, like that man is the, still stiff. I yeah, can't lie. Yeah, I want to be so rigid. Me. <laughs> so I mean, it rigid. depends what we mean by like creation. Like, I mean, like the first, the first goal, uh, um, the goal that 
that Kevin's goal against Arsenal was literally like a long ball. He brought he brought the ball down. I mean, he was jumping against holding, and then he slipped the ball through. Like uh, yes, he he will get assists just because of ha- City plays so far up the pitch. They're always mm. in your half, so at some point he's gonna get the ball to feet and he's gonna slip it off to people. Are you saying that's easy? No, no, I'm not saying it's easy. He's gonna find passes, but the mm. the style of football that City play, I would expect anybody. I mean, even Edison gets assists sometimes. Like um, people in that team, I think will pick up assists, and mm. I think it's natural. But I, I agree, he's he's developed and he's progressed, and I think that's what he's going to have to do to play in a Pep team because it's not just having an out and out goal scorer. He wants whoever's playing in that position to to play with the team. But I don't, I, I don't think I'm ever gonna like describe him as like a creative centre forward. Um, yeah, no, not a Harry Kane then. No, no, really, like s- simple as he's not. He's not as good in the ball uh, as as Harry Kane is. But, yeah, period. Erling Haaland is not as good on the ball as Harry Kane. Sorry, watch Harry. Kane. Watch no, Harry. No, the, no, the, no, the goal that Harry Kane scored yesterday. Mm-hmm. That link up play with Pedro Porro. Ha- Haaland is not doing that. And that's fair. I actually do agree yeah, with you. Thank you. I agree with you. And Joyce, sorry, I keep no. The thing is, Haal- Haaland's a poacher. At the end of the day, if he's in the box, all you gotta do is smash it. You know. <laughs> Rest up, my guy. It got a little ways, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. Like it's it's obvious if he's in the ball or if he's in the box, it's happening, sort of thing. But in terms of like creating like one of those really nice champagne football sort of goals, you're rarely gonna see like Haaland be the goal scorer for it. This You're probably gonna catch someone like Gundogan or Mares on the end of yeah, that. Yeah, to be fair, he doesn't need to. He has players around him. Facts. This might even be a stupid question or a hard question. Do you think Pep Guardiola has? taken Haaland to another level like do you think he's developed Haaland to a point where he wasn't there before if that makes sense I don't know because I look at like the comparison to how he was playing at Dortmund and mm. like some some times we miss the kind of Haaland that was there for Dortmund but at the same time that you have to factor, factor in Bundesliga's tax and how awful like their pressing is over there and it's mm. not the same as playing in the Prem um, but I feel like every single player that Pep has had has elevated them to a different level even if it's just a small bit when you play under such a system you have no choice but to evolve a whole bench so I, I genuinely do think he has definitely and the thing is I asked that question just to come on to our next topic which has been a hot topic this entire month like I don't even know why everyone's talking about it but manager of the season the awards are coming up right and obviously why did Tima <laughs> and Philippa roll their eyes at the same damn <laughs> time like gone in, in, in intuition yes, gone in <laughs> you don't know how in sync that was i was like what the hell but no the manager of, um, of the season all of the awards are coming up very shortly and pep guardiola people are saying pep guardiola should get it manager um, of the season what for the prem for, for the, the premier, premier league. then it's not it's not pep i, I, I can be honest Mikkel to say it's not pep. should get it people are saying dean smith should dean smith eddie howe should get it who are we going for? And as a collective, I want us to decide here and say this is the Gold Diggers manager of the season. So I'll start with you, Lauren. Who who would you put in your pick? Eddie Some Howe. people are even saying Unite Emery, by the way. Just putting that out there. Oh, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I would, uh, f- to me, I think... I'm not saying Pep because winning the Premier League is standard Pep. So I don't necessarily... <laughs> like. It's, I don't think he's done anything special this season to... You know, it's not a Centurion season or something. Mm-hmm. He's about to... He might win the treble. Yeah, yeah, but that's, it's not, that's Premier, Premier League. That's why I asked for clarity. It, will, it would come you, into it, though. I think it would come into it. I think it will come into people, but I'm going to base it on people's Premier League season. Mm. Okay. Then I'm going... Uh, for me, I'm going Eddie Howe because I think to take... Like, he came into Newcastle when they are in a relegation battle. Mm. And to take that team from a relegation battle into the Champions League, like, Dan Byrne is going to be playing <laughs> Champions League football. It's not as if they, like... They sell him. It's not like they spent, like, a mm. hell of a lot of money on that team. Like, he he's actually just coached them really, really, really well. Um, and I think he's got them ahead of schedule. Um, OK, yes, Arsenal have had a good season under Arteta, but equally, you've been top of the league since September, and if you don't win it, that's bottling it. So I don't think you should reward somebody for that. <laughs> so... Team. Yeah, I'm going to hell. If Arteta does win it, would you give it to him? No. Okay. Who are you giving it to? Um, he can't have those eyebrows and that hairline. And Come <laughs> on. Damn. Yeah. Okay, man. Hey. He will be, will be the listening. The heart and the mind connecting. Nah, 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 nah. Oh. I think for me... <laughs> <laughs> I think Rub for, your hands together, guys. I think for me, it is definitely Eddie Howe. And for the reasons that Lauren has just stated... 
even if Arsenal win the league, um, Arsenal has spent a significant amount of money on that team um, to get to where they were. We're talking about a Newcastle team that last season was battling relegation. I remember when Trippier went there um, in the January and I, I, I was thinking to myself, why would you go from a Champions League team to battle relegation? But, I mean, as you say, Dan Burns about to play Champions League football and you can't deny that, man. Even with the, you know, the, what they spent, I don't even know how much they spent. They probably spent less than 100 million in the summer. Mm. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's a no-brainer. It's exactly what the ladies have said. And I think coming from my perspective as well, where... David Moyes came to West Ham for his second time when we were in the middle of relegation, saved us from relegation. And then the next season, we were around those Champions League spots until we bottled it ourselves and then just um, qualified for Europa. Yeah. That's not easy because mm. it's not just like results, it's the mentality of a team. And that's the problem I think, I know that a lot of Arsenal fans are having with their players at the moment, where it's like they're playing well, but do they have that winning mentality in them and I don't think they do mm. but special shout out like you said to Anaya Emery because yeah. nobody saw Villa mm. creeping up like that mm. nobody and for me it's just like it just goes to show that again talking about ex-players becoming managers Steven Gerrard did not know what he was doing with that team to strip Tyrone Mings of that captaincy seems like a ridiculous decision in hindsight now um, you can just see how these people have grown in leaps and bounds and I I mean, I understand why Arsenal fans didn't like Emery, of course, but I, th I thought that we needed to put some respect on his yeah, name. He's a he's great tactician. Mm -hmm. Great exactly. tactician. And you can see that when he's playing in cups and how he changes the outcome of games, like, all the time. He is a Europa League specialist, um, so special <laughs> shout out to him, but it's, Eddie Howe. it's always going to be Eddie Howe for me. Always. I love that you said that because Arsenal fans are really going to come here and camp and say, no, he's not that good, but... <clears throat> Hey, all I'm saying is that Europa League, Arsenal should have won it. <laughs> that final, Arsenal should have won it. It wasn't the manager's fault, it was the players. Joyce, what about you? Yeah. Who's your manager of the season? <laughs> I'm glad we're all in the same consensus, yeah. Anyhow, I feel like um, Newcastle still aren't getting the flowers that they deserve regardless. Oh, I've hmm. seen shouts for the team of the season and I'm still look side lying people that think um, <laughs> Mr. Number One in uh, Arsenal, Ramsdale, deserves uh, a team Ooh. of the season over someone like Nick Pope. Or some of the saves today. Yeah. And the, the thing, in fact, I'm not even going to say nothing. I'm not going to say nothing. I, argue, I could it. easily say that Newcastle arguably have one of their best defence in the league they this do. season. So what are we doing with Ram... Anyways, regardless. Um, yeah, no. Give the man his flowers. I feel like uh, it would just be too easy to give Arteta the uh, the manager of the season. Yeah. If you've held the top spot for that long, you're expected to win it. I don't know, you know you got you've got the Premier League trophy as your manager of the season sort of award. You don't need and to be quite honest, in terms of like tactics and whatnot, Arsenal haven't been all there in comparison to Eesh. a club like uh, Newcastle. So um I'm not gonna say that. Mm. I don't recognize it's real anyways. Someone said it! Someone said it! I don't know I don't know if I can I, you're sitting way too close to her. <laughs> <laughs> you probably get cooked Guilty by association. By association. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I feel like um, there's arguments for all three of them. All three or four of them. Um, Pep Guardiola included. Because I do feel like even though Pep Guardiola has done this several times, been in the league several times, it still takes that matter <coughs> of bastardness to come out and now overtake Arsenal and say, yeah, we're going to fucking win this Premier League, maybe the Champions League and maybe the FA Cup as well. So I just feel like, yeah, if he does that, <coughs> he'll definitely be in contention for me anyway. But Eddie Howe, like all of you have all just said, like there's absolutely no way anyone in my opinion, can take that away from him. Yeah. From releg from a relegation scrap <laughs> to top four. Sorry, Lauren, are you alright? <laughs> yeah, I, no, I, 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 mean, what, I mean, what is to say are you okay? I was, just gonna, longest, I was sold out for a second. Yeah, I wanted to keep talking, but no. I was like, nah, man. I I'm sold out for a second and I looked across and there was just a tear rolling down. I was like, nah. <laughs> 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 sorry. <laughs> Great. I really thought um, it might be because Newcastle was taking your spot. Like, legit. Oh. Newcastle. New top six. I've accepted it. New <laughs> top six is in the mm. building. Chelsea's not in it. <laughs> Tottenham no. might not be in Listen, it either. Everyone it's needs to put four. respect on Eddie Howe's name from... Where was Bournemouth? Happy. Yeah. 
is the Vitality Stadium. That is a tiny ass stadium tiny. for a tiny ass team. They have come so far, it and that is off the back of him yeah. and his backroom staff. And I've admired him for a very long time. And like you said, Tima, like Kieran Trippier, why are you coming from Leicester to come to mm. Newcastle? Yes, he wants to come home and all that, but. I have a feeling he knew who was coming and he saw the vision. Mm. And I feel like a lot of football fans didn't see this vision that Kieran Trippier saw. Because I remember mm. when um, Newcastle got taken over, everyone was like, nah, it'll still take them like five to 10 years to get into the Champions so League ahead to of compete. Schedule. They are so far ahead of schedule that it's scary to me. And that Amanda Staveley woman, she scares me more than Marina did. She looks very scary. She was like, she's about business. And you see the way she was cuddling and yeah, cradling. Yeah, she loves, she loves it. She loves them. She, she loves them. And cradling the players. Yeah, after, yeah. That was love. And you cannot beat a football team that has love. We don't have that right now. Chelsea don't have that right now. Do you right know what now. the best thing about her? She doesn't say a word. Nothing. But Moves why? in silence. It's fine. But this is it. All of these people need to keep their mouth Directors shut. Don't have to Karen do that. Brady, yeah. keep your mouth shut. All of these shut. people just quiet. Understand Him. your role and then execute your role You're behind the scenes. You're literally just supposed to be behind the backboard, supporting the club yeah. while I say nothing. Well, <laughs> That's it. It used to be Chelsea with Marina Granovskaya Faye, with Marina <laughs> Granovskaya, and that's what she did so, so well. And another contention for manager of the season, this is just a joke, by the way, no one cooked me. Big Sam Allardyce? Anybody? <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen, ladies. I feel like he's, Big Sam nominated big himself. Big Sam, he's I feel like Mikel Arteta. Oh. Regardless of the fact that he decided he wanted to run his mouth faster than the Eurostar Euro train, it's calm. <laughs> because his record anyways is great. You just didn't need to say all of that with my sort of thing. He's still really good in terms of saving clubs from relegation. Unfortunately, Leeds hold that. You're going down. <laughs> but um, this man earns a bag regardless. Whether they, they stay up, they no, go down, does. it's that, fine. Sam Allardyce's Bolton team, I remember, they were everyone's bogey oh. side. Oh, don't yeah, remind do you, me. Like, they, JJ, like, I'm conscious yeah. of him, man. <laughs> yeah, no. God. No, he's a good manager, but you, you come on, man. You can't yeah. sit like he's that. He's got to do an impossible job, and now he's opening his he big looks, mouth. Yeah. He looks like a Butlin singer. Do you know, like, one of those pub <laughs> What, what I will say, what I will say is, am like, I lying? You do, you do need to have when you're in those positions. You do need to have a manager who has got vim and confidence, yeah, to come into the press and be like, "Yeah, we're beating this." Like, what are you talking about? Because without it, you you really cannot be you've timid about it. You've already lost before you've gone on. You've lost before. And me personally, even though this, I just found out that we did actually win. Thank yeah. God. But you beat United. Wait, 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 you know, I'm gonna have to check the Shy tapes, but we could have no, no. won by more. There was pens, Penals, apparently yeah. not given, and all that sort of stuff. But my point, my actual point was, <laughs> is that, to the chat now. <laughs> <laughs> my actual point was, is that we have Leeds second, like the penultimate game of the season, yes. and I'm still nervous about that game, even though I uh, technically shouldn't be because Big Sam is a specialist. Mm, you yeah. did it for us, done it for plenty of teams. Didn't manage it with West Brom, but he's good at, like you said, he's, mm. the record speaks for itself. Mm. But yeah, I, I laughed obviously at what he said because he has mm-hmm. he's got this really big thing about English managers not getting their roses again. Yeah. Um, Did he see, has he seen what's happened at Stamford Bridge this season? Yeah. But so they, he, has this, he has that, he has this thing about it and like it's it's big. But I would just say like Sam, hold your pint of wine, babes, and just focus on the task <laughs> at hand. He said, <laughs> he looks like a butler. No, when he had that bust with the sun, he ordered a pint of wine. Did he? Yeah, that's, oh, I didn't oh. pull that out of my arms. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, okay, sorry. I thought we were going along the lines of what Timo was saying. <laughs> he said, I might be 68 and look old, but there's nobody ahead of me in football terms. Not Pep, not Jurgen Klopp, not Mikel Arteta. It's all there with me. Wow. Anyway, on that mo- on that note, we are going to. I just found that end funny because. Podcast. No, 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 no. But I find that funny because we managed to replicate the same goal twice against him. Leicester, it made me so happy. But you know what? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. When your football's so good, you can choose the type of goal. Can you imagine? <laughs> you <want to> <laughs> Must be nice. Oh, you scored the same type of goal twice. Okay. 
Anyway, thank you guys for listening to the Gold Diggers podcast. Make sure you're following us on our Instagram at Gold Diggers UK underscore, our Twitter at Gold Diggers UK, on our TikTok as well. Make sure you're following these lovely individual ladies, including myself as well, and Bree in the background. Yeah. Oh, she did a peace sign, by the way. Just for content, she did a peace sign. <laughs> but we'll catch you back here every weekend until the end of the season. Let's hope Man City get the Premier League because if they don't, we will not be here. <laughs> I'm saying that for free. Not just see me. Just me and shy. <laughs> it'll literally, Sorry. It will literally just be the Arsenal ladies and that's it. But anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, like, all the good stuff and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.